The Wisconsin Elections Commission this week voted unanimously to send an email to local clerks reminding them that federal and state law allow people to assist disabled people in voting. How does that square with the recent state Supreme Court ruling that banned absentee ballot drop boxes and requires voters to themselves put a ballot in the mail or deliver in person? And is this just one more gray area as next Tuesday's primary election fast approaches? We check in with the executive director of the Milwaukee Election Commission. Commission, Claire Woodall Vogue for her take. Now, four days until the election. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, as for voters with a disability, what's your guidance for them and for clerks with returning their absentee ballots? So, in the city of Milwaukee, we have been very consistent ever since the Supreme Court ruling came out that voters with disabilities do have federal protections. And so, if they need an agent, to return their absentee ballot for them, we have been accepting it. We just need confirmation um, that they needed assistance returning their ballot. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court ruling left it very gray, and so many clerks have been left to um, interpret it themselves. And you know, there's 1,800 clerks in the state. So luckily, with the um, Wisconsin Election Commission guidance and reminder, hopefully all clerks will be making sure that voters with disabilities are protected. So also, what are clerks to do after votes and rulings in the legislature and in the State Elections Commission about filling in missing information on absentee ballots? Again, another gray area where clerks have been really left to interpret things themselves. Um, the guidance from 2016 that the Wisconsin Election Commission issued is still valid. And so if a voter's witness didn't complete their full address, we see a lot of times they leave off here in Milwaukee, they leave off Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, we have been curing those and contacting voters if we need information. What is it like to have all of these changes swirling around as you're ready to administer this election? You know, for us, we are very used to it. Election administrators are used to interpreting and, and reacting, but unfortunately for Wisconsin voters, it's adding to greater confusion and that ultimately results in more distrust of the process itself. When you're having court rulings within 30 days of, of an election, when absentee ballots had already been mailed out two weeks before that ruling. Yeah, your city uh, polling places, like other municipalities across the state, tested your voting equipment this past week. Uh, were any problems encountered? No, there were no problems. We test all 180 machines here in Milwaukee, and then we held our public test where we did have one member of the public who came and a few news media, but there were no issues. Our machines are reading and transmitting results exactly as those paper ballots are cast. Still, Milwaukee County has been singled out by Republicans for potential fraud. Uh, does Milwaukee administer elections any differently than in the rest of the state? No. You know, I think that's one thing to really highlight is that we continue to be singled out, but we are administering elections just like every other municipality, every other county in the state. Our equipment is used elsewhere in the state. And our policies and procedures are following state law and Wisconsin Election Commission guidance. Following the 2020 election, you were threatened by election deniers. Does that, does that persist? It does persist, unfortunately. You know, I think that it was odd in that we saw the greatest amount of threats um, actually come almost a year after the election. And nearly two years after the election, we are still seeing um, a lot of election deniers, conspiracy theorists that I battle um, and that our election officials, you know, are answering questions that are very complicated on election day. And we've had to do additional training to make sure that they're comfortable working on election day. What, what kinds of uh, trainings and preparations have you made with any kind of expectation of continuing threats to election officials? Yeah, so just this summer, we trained all of our chief election inspectors on managing and maintaining control of the polling place de-escalation techniques um, and really trying to prevent anything from becoming a potential violent situation, um, trying to kind of nip it in the bud because before it would escalate to that point and really going over the polling place procedures in case you need to remove someone. Have you lost a number of people uh, working at the polling places because of all this? You know, to our knowledge, we haven't. I think most of our election officials really feel like this is a civic duty and 
you know, feel like if they were to abandon their civic duty, that that would be a greater threat to democracy. Um, but it's really important to us that we make sure they feel equipped to go to work on election day and feel safe doing so. Just uh, with about a minute left, what concern do you have that people may have tried to illegally test the online absentee ballot request process, like those people in Racine uh, who are now under investigation? You know, I before they were trying to highlight and test it and did so illegally, we have not seen any evidence of any type of widespread abuse or misuse of the online system. We monitor and see if there's any type of unusual mailing address being requested. Voters had to submit photo ID unless they're indefinitely confined. And I would just say as a reminder, that that's a felony. It is voter fraud to um, abuse the system. And we take that very seriously. And anything that we see, we refer to the district attorney's office. All right. Well, we wish you luck uh, with this primary election upcoming and with the general election. Uh, Claire Woodall-Vogg, thank you. Thank you.